This is a pen plotter machine. They come in all sorts of different sizes. This is an A3 one, and this one over here is a much bigger A1 one. You put the pen in the end here, this whole arm moves backwards and forwards, and then the whole unit moves along there, allowing this pen to draw all over. You can put all sorts of different types of pens into it, pens, brushes, pointers, and also you can use lots of different types of paper, rough paper, smooth paper, dark paper, colored paper, really big paper, and then all the way down to tiny small paper. And that is a pen plotter. Hi, I'm Dan Cat. I am a contemporary print artist based in Shrewsbury, which is in the UK. If you found the short version useful, hit like and stick around for the long version. So just before we start, this is a general video and there will always be exceptions and corrections to what I'm saying. So if you have any of those, then drop them into the comments below so we can all read them and learn them. Right. Pen plotters. You have almost certainly already seen pen plotters in films in the form of seismographs. Seismo seismographs that measure earthquakes like the one in the recent Ghostbusters Afterlife film and the one from the very scientifically correct film Tremors. Or are also lie detectors used in cop dramas and films throughout time. Those work by having a pen on the end of an arm which shifts back and forth while the paper moves in one direction underneath it. So what if the pen, instead of moving in an arc, moved in a straight line and the paper could shift back and forth, then you'll be able to draw more than just, um, just the squiggles, which is exactly what something like um, the modern day cricket does, or way back in 1968 with the Calcom uh, 565 plotter. Uh, for reference, the first dot matrix printer was around um, 57, laser printers in 72 and inkjets in around 72. But they didn't really start becoming common until the mid 80s, which is around the time that HP were coming out with like desktop pen plotters. So there's this window of time where dot matrix, dot matrix printers dealt with text and simple graphs and graphics for producing documents and reports, and pen plotters would be used for things like um, technical drawings and drafting. So you need 10 copies of a detailed plan, then a pen plotter was a way of doing that. But then, in the mid 80s, laser printers and inkjets took over that role as they could do both text and graphics. And in the case of inkjets, they could do way more colours than the, the pen plotters of the time, um, like the HPs and the, the IBMs. So they kind of peaked and then quickly got replaced by all of these printers uh, that we know and love now. However, artists, of course, often jump on new technology and there's a number of them who experimented with pen plotting at the time, back here, and formed part of the early generative art movement, which was often called algorithmic drawing back then, although that's a video for another time. So although artists have continued to use pen plotters since that time, it's very much died down until fairly recently, with a big push that coming from Evil Mad Scientist, with uh, the third version of their pen plotter uh, called the Axidraw version 3, which, uh, like this one here, which launched at the end of um, 2016. I got this one in 2019. I really like mine, not sponsored, because they come uh, ready to plug in straight out of the box, but there are also many kits for XY plotters. You can get uh, some for a couple of hundred dollars. And with 3D printing being more accessible than ever, there's getting more and more of these uh, parts you can print yourself or easily buy kits. And there's also the good old fashioned way of making them out of Lego. So I would like to say that there's been a recent explosion in pen blotting and art um, pen plotting art and artist, but in reality that's moved from incredibly niche, let me just grab my thing, uh, to just very niche. Most, um, most pen plotter artists all know all the other pen plotter artists, it's that kind of thing. To put it into context using hashtags on Instagram, if we search for watercolour there's about 40 million posts, which goes up to 54 million if you drop the U and use watercolour. 
Mm -hmm. Screen printing uh, is about 5.2 million posts. So if you're doing watercolors, that's a, that's a huge pool of people you're in. If you're doing screen printing, that's a lot smaller. Getting even more niche with Woodblock, there's only 240,000 posts on Instagram. But then when you get into hashtag penplotter, at the time of recording, there's like 7,280 posts with the penplotter hashtag. One of the reasons I'm making this video is because when you say, oh, I'm a pen potter artist, you first have to explain what a pen potter is, uh, which you don't have to do when you say, hey, I'm a watercolor artist or I'm a screen printer. So who uses a pen plotter? Like if you wanted to use a pen plotter, how could you do that? I would say there are roughly five different types or levels of artists who use a pen plotter and this isn't a hierarchical list. Let me get a wipe. The first is somebody who uses um, something like Adobe Illustrator or similar vector software. Most of these plotters understand a file format called SVG which this type of software like Illustrator is happy to write out. Here are some pen plots done by Joel. Uh, there's a link uh, down below. And he's used a CAD package. Um, many artists who use Illustrator with just a little bit of working slightly differently that could be translated to pen plotter drawings. There's a tutorial by Anna that I'll also link to down below that shows you how to do generative art style plots without any program at all. The next level is when people use the programming language processing or P5JS, which is a computer language specifically designed and aimed for artists. Um, if an artist wants to take their first step into computer programming, this is often their way into it. And processing can again export the SVG files that you'll use to send to the pen plotter. Three. You have people who write code in languages like Python, JavaScript, R, all sorts. In fact, anything that outputs a simple text file, which is what an SVG ultimately is, uh, can be used to create the files you need to send to the plotter. Getting even closer for is using the libraries designed to talk directly to the plotter instead of sending them a file. So this is Python talking to the Anxi draw, and then we have the command move to. 10 to 10 to, which is with the pen up, and then line two, 20 across, 10 down, and then line two, 20, 20, line two, 10 across, 20 up, and then line two, 10, 10, takes us back to the start, and then move to zero, zero, brings the pen back to here. And we've drawn a square. Or you can talk to the pen plotter more directly in its own language, which is called G-Code, which is also used by a lot of CNC and 3D printing machines. Uh, an example of some G-Code, and this isn't the exact syntax, but I wanted to keep it easy to explain. Um, that will do the same square as before will look like this. So you have your X and your Y axis, Z is up and down. So first instruction, move the pen up. Then we're going to move to 10, 10, move the pen back down, draw 20 across, then to 20, 20, 10, 20, 10, 10, pen up, back to zero, zero. And you can see we've got the same square all over again. Uh, changing these values allows you to draw the square in other places. And if you wrapped a little bit of code around these things, then you can start to draw lots of squares, uh, at different angles, different sizes. The fifth, the fifth level to talking to the plotter is doing it directly and controlling it in real time. So this could be in response to a webcam if you want to sit and have the robot draw a portrait of you. It could be stocks and shares. It could be in response to the weather, um, music, audio inputs, um, earthquakes, or even movement of underground killer monsters, I guess. So now we know what a plotter is and what people, uh, what level people can work with it at, what about the actual pen part? Well, if you can fit a pen into it and there's an adapter like this for larger pens, then you can pretty much make it draw with it. So here's a range of, of pens and ink. So these ones are good. These are the Steblo 88s. They, um, they don't fade, they're light fast. And then we've also got these, these are permanent ink. Stedler, these are permanent, they don't fade. And then you've got these other felt tips over here. Those tend to fade in the light, they're not light fast. 
Of course, the problem with plastic is it's disposable. So if you can get refillable pens, so here we have the, um, the Stedler Mars Matic. So that's a refillable pen. And then up here, I've also got all these. These are Twisby Eco pens, not sponsored, uh, which you can refill with ink. So I've got a whole ink selection over here. Um, yeah, so anyway, back to the desk. People also use paintbrushes, um, custom 3D printed ink delivery syringes, drill bits, which is starting to get into the world of CNC machines. I've seen people use wax cans, wax candles, engraving tools um, the, for making copper plates and zinc plates that you can then run prints from. I've also used this remarkable e-ink notebook. So you kind of have this uh, clean digital De original design that you then go through this analog process where it's simulating um, brushes and pens and ink in this case a calligraphy pen and then taking the result of this and then printing it into um, like a, a print so you kind of have this this um, this code to analog back into digital process you can do similar things with um, Apple pens on the iPad using Procreate software and like that. So pretty much everything, but not pencils, not normal pencils or color pencils, um, or at least pencils are very hard to do. There are ways, but if you're thinking, oh, I'll get a pen plotter to do these lovely pencil drawings, um, then you're in for a world of pain. Um, the same with charcoal sticks and similar type of things. As for paper, again, pretty much any surface will do. I tend to use, uh, I tend to use watercolor. So I use cold press, which has this nice rough texture and hot press, which is nice and smooth. Um, rough paper like the watercolor tends to rub nibs out pretty, um, wears them out pretty quickly. So I use fountain pens because the metal nibs don't wear down. Um, another thing, if you're drawing the same line over and over again in the same spot, you'll probably tear the paper. Um, some people love to plot on oh, black paper uh, because obviously with normal printers, you're normally printing onto white paper and using metallics like gold or silver on black paper isn't something you see very often. Uh, I use Fabrino Black Black, uh, but again, part of the fun is exploring um, different types of paper. People have plots onto newspapers, magazines, paintings from secondhand shops, glass, um, attached a stick to the plotter uh, to put the designs in sand in a very zen-like fashion. Um, as mentioned before, copper and zinc printing plates, tattoo guns and skin, I've seen. So the whole world, uh, uh, apart from pencils. Right, I guess I should be wrapping up now. I should say that the XY plotter isn't the only type of plotter. You can get um, cute things like the liner sketching bot. Uh, the actual robots, that, like the ones in the factory with the big arm, but smaller, but not always. The Boston Dynamics dog can actually understand G-code, um, like the stuff we had before. So if you set it up with like kids pavement chalk, it can walk about and chalk on the pavements. You also have polar graphs that hang on the wall and they use like a pulley system, like two pulleys that will then move it about as you adjust the pulleys. Um, you sometimes see those with aerosol cans for spraying. And there's also harmographs which are very mechanical in nature. You attach arms of various lengths to discs and pendulums, and as they rotate round, they draw onto paper them. They're often also rotating. Um, so there's Jens, James, who's Gandhi work on Instagram, and Robert, I'll add all the links below, are all um, people who use these type of plotters over on Instagram. Harmographs are kind of the plot of sibling of spirographs in a way. Um, artists have also hung buckets uh, of paint on the end of a long rope and then put a hole in the bucket and as it spins around you get a similar effect. It goes back thousands of years. A bag of sand again with a hole in it or a bowl on the end of a long pendulum or even a pendulum with a sharp pointy tip for drawing into sand are ones that date way way back. So if you're interested in pen plotting, there's a lot to dig your teeth into. Uh, more resources, there's a uh, hashtag plotter Twitter on Twitter. There's hashtag pen plot on Instagram. There's the pen plotter group on Facebook and another one on Reddit. Uh, there's a website called Drawing Bots that has a Discord where people talk about pen plotters all the time. 
Michelle from Dirt Alley Designs has a bunch of tutorials. I'll link that. And Generative Hut also has a bunch of guides and shopping guides and a couple of tutorials. Plus, you can follow me on here, where I'm going to be making more videos going through some aspects of pen plotting in more detail. So if that's a thing that you're interested in, then like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Thank you.